Hey everybody, it's the coach. Welcome to the special Saturday edition of the NFL on EA Sports. Up next, we've got what should be an intriguing matchup between the New Orleans Saints and the Seattle Seahawks. With that, let's get up to Seattle. Standing by at CenturyLink Field, here are Brandon Godden and Charles Davis. With the beautiful Puget Sound just to our west, you get a look inside CenturyLink Field here in Seattle. These folks love their football in Seattle. This was the scene a moment ago as the home squad came out of the tunnel and it was just absolutely deafening in this building. They're set for football, so are we as the Seahawks get set to match up with the New Orleans Saints. Alongside Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon, and Charles kickoff moments away. Quickly, what are you watching in this one? The offensive line for both teams, because both teams have a terrific pass rush. They've got to keep their passers upright. If they have a chance to do that, they can both thrive on offense and move the ball downfield. The big left foot of Sebastian Janikowski ready to get us started. And off we go from Seattle. And they will not get a chance to return this one as it's through the end zone for a touchback. And here come the Saints for their opening drive. They'll be led out by their veteran quarterback, the former Purdue Boilermaker. It's Drew Brees. Total relentlessness of consistency. Almost like a machine if you watch him in practice after every throw. He resets his feet, visualizes all the other options on a play. So if he has to do it in a game, it's already there, has the muscle memory. I started calling him AI for artificial intelligence. Whatever defense does during a game, he absorbs it and then uses it against them as the game moves on. A first carry now, this is Alvin Kamara. And he was able to shed the tackle, but the reserves come in for the stop. Give him five on the carry there, and it'll be second down. And the big boys up front in the trenches. What do you think of the O-line, Charles? I love them because this is a group that's so cohesive. They know what the man next to them is going to do at all times, and they operate as a terrific unit. Ball on the 30, they'll come up with a second and five. On second down, here's Breeze. Catch here, left side, Thomas. And he'll get it up to the 33-yard line. Only three yards on the catch. It's third down. Partner, your thoughts on this D-line? I love a unit that can control the run and get after the passer. This is an all-around terrific defensive front. Hard to move the ball against them on the ground, and then when you want to throw it, look out. Here they come after the quarterback. An early test. Two plays in. This is third and two. And the former Heisman winner, this is Mark Ingram. And he's going to have the first down yardage to the 35. Just a gain of a couple, but good enough to keep the drive rolling. Didn't get it by much, but bottom line got the first down. Avoiding that three and out, how vital is that on the first drive? To me, it's like the first round of a boxing match. You know, it may not mean much right then and there, but you'd rather not lose it, right? So you want to go ahead and get it. Kind of establish something early and hope it can carry through. Ball up to the 35 now as they come up on first and 10. On first down, Breeze. Pass incomplete. The tight end, Josh Hill, was the target. And now it's second down. I know our vantage point might be a little bit better way up here. But that looked like an ill-advised throw to me. I didn't see anything open. And this play just didn't look right from the beginning. It did not. I thought he might get outside and just chuck it away. Dangerous pass, incomplete. Here's second and 10 now from the 35. Ready, you ready? On second down, Kamara. And he is met at the line of scrimmage and he goes down right there. 
Making the stop that time, Bobby Wagner. Well, we just saw a great example of what we talked about with his coach prior to the game. He's definitely one of the better linebackers at reading a play and flowing to make the stop before it turns into something big. A nickel look by Seattle on third down. Yep, five defensive backs now. Wait, wait. Wait, 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 wait. Shotgun now for Breeze. He's going to go for a big play downfield. And he knocks the ball away, and it falls incomplete. So it looked like they were getting ready to convert there on third down, but what an effort to get his hand on that one, knock it away, and brings up a fourth down decision. Here's Thomas Morstead on now to punt it away on fourth down. Back deep, the dangerous Tyler Lockett. And a great job here. This is going to turn out to be a beauty. This is marked down at about the three-yard line. The Seahawks offense now. They get ready to come back onto the field. Here's Rashad Penny, first carry for the former San Diego State Aztec. And he'll get this up past the five to the seven yard line. Tackle is made by Cameron Jordan. And that's frustrating for a defense because they've got him pinned down deep. And on the first play, they gave up a run that keeps an offense on schedule. Yeah, because three to four yards, that's all you're looking for right there, right? That's absolutely perfect, really, as a play call. You get three to four yards on first down, that's what they talk about us all the time, about being ahead of the chains or on target, ahead of schedule. They were after that run. And his throw is going to be incomplete. The tight end, Ed Dixon, was the target. And it's third down. Well, they're slinging it. And then there's one you got to put a timer on, huh? I mean, that one came in hot. That came in hot, but overthrown out of his reach and incomplete. So after the second down incompletion, they'll come up now against a third and six. From the shotgun, Wilson. And he's got a man open. That's Marshall. And they work this out past the 25. It's a gain of 20 and picking up the first. I'm sorry, but it's almost unfair. I mean, Brandon Marshall can make so many plays, but even when you think he's covered, he's not. No, he's really <laughs> not. He uncovers and makes a play on you and picks up good yardage in doing so. A first down carry. Not much room here as he only gets it to about the 30. Three yards on the pickup there, and it'll be second down. What's the old expression? Three yards in a cloud of dust? In this case, it's dust-covered pellets. It's no longer that old grass that we used to play on right and chew it up. Now we've got that artificial surface. You see the pellets go up. Still a nice play by the defense. A first carry for the converted wideout, J.D. McKissick. And a nice move will yield nothing as he's stopped behind the line. That'll be a loss of a yard, and it leads to a third down. Double this guy has to be a priority before moving up to the next level because the big fella, he just ate that one alive, just stuffed it. In fact, before the game, he was talking to us, and he's like, hey, these pants make me look fat? And we said, nah, man, you're just a whole lot of guy. He is at well over 300 pounds. He's a big man. Check, check. Up. 
The Saints with an extra defensive back here on third on the field. Could they blitz? They go play action with Wilson. He's got Lockett. And he's got the first before he's brought down at the 39-yard line. Wilson to Lockett there for the Seahawks first down. So on that play, defense was in the zone. They ran a crossing route offensively, but the defense there, you got to be good with communication, don't you? You certainly do, and it's not something that is really evident when you watch it on the screen. But everyone's talking, communicating, pointing, and it keeps you from chasing receivers because you have a specific zone you have to cover. When a receiver's in your zone and he crosses to another one, you got to let your guy know. They got a completion there, but I like the discipline they show to stay in their proper areas and then make the tackle. And the throw left sideline here is caught, but they'll rule it incomplete. Couldn't keep his feet in. Second down. He was looking for his big target, Brandon Marshall. That'll bring up second down. Well, there's times when you see these catches that are made, and we just know the guys playing it are really wishing for college rules. Only need that one, one foot, foot down instead of two. It's awfully difficult on the sideline, isn't it? Cut, Cut. Cut. Second and ten. It's Wilson again. And Dixon has it. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. His first catch, good for 14 there, and a first down. I don't believe that this opening drive is surprising to either one of us after the time we spent with the coaching staff and players prior to the game. What about you? Absolutely. Not only that, but that big article in the paper this morning about their philosophy on starting games like you're shot out of a cannon, and that's what they've done. Very methodical here on this first drive. Yeah, so many teams talk about that fast start. We're actually seeing it happen right here in front of us. But now the kicker, can they cap it off by putting the ball in the end zone? And we will not see another play as time has run out on this first quarter. Nothing, nothing, our score. We'll be back to Seattle right after this. Alongside my broadcast partner, Charles Davis, Brandon Gordon hits the Seahawks with a football to begin quarter number two. And they're on the move here. They've got it first and 10. They'll run it now, out of the gun. He'll get about four here, down to the 43-yard line. I call that play a success. A nice inside run sets up a very manageable second down, a very solid gain on that play. On second down, here's Penny. And some good tackling there as he stopped up at about the 41. It's Patrick Robinson there on the stop. Well, so many times we look at a short run and we praise the offense for trying to set the tempo and establish things, but the defensive guys, hey, they just won the battle there. It wasn't a big run given up. They don't always have to absorb the body blow. Sometimes they dish them out themselves. This offense has converted two third downs on this drive already. This is third and four. Now Wilson, he finds his man, Baldwin. And he's taken down inside the 30. First down, Seahawks, Wilson to Baldwin. Third and four is always a tough call. Maybe a little too long to run for it, but not too long to hit him on the quick slant. And that was well executed. Found the window and zipped it right in there. First down, Wilson. He'll lock it with a grab over the middle. And he'll go down here right around the 23-yard line. Five yards on the catch there, brings up second down. 
He decided to run a hitch route. It really helped to have a guy who can turn it loose. And boy, he rifled one in there on that one. Not much run after catch, but it worked really well. Under four to go now as the clock runs and they come up on second down. On second down, here's Wilson. It's caught right side, Dixon. A nice pickup of 14, and it moves the stick, sets up a first and goal. When this offense can get their tight ends involved, they can move the football. Here, a nice route, able to look it in, and picks up the first down. An inaugural trip to the red zone here for the Seahawks. They're looking at a first and goal from about the nine. They'll try and run for it with Penny. And he is in for the Seattle touchdown. Rashad Penny, a nine-yard touchdown run. And the Seahawks are able to strike for six. I know we don't talk about it enough, but the intelligence level of the guys up front blocking, the offensive linemen, maybe the smartest guys in football overall. Add in a little bit of athleticism and a whole lot of toughness, you've got a lot to deal with, don't you? That's why the guys in the backfield get them really nice Christmas gifts, right? If they're smart, they do. Janikowski good with the extra point, and it's now a 7-0 game. That one was an extended drive, 14 plays all told, and a nine-yard run on the end of it. to kick is Janikowski. On the return, here's Trey Edmonds. And a good effort on the return there. Gets him across the 30 to the 33-yard line. And now the Saints get set to trot out there. They punted last time they had it. What steps, Charles, do you think they have to take to make sure they don't do that again? Well, let's just go to the football 101, the trite expression 101. Win first down. Make five, six, seven yards on first down and make it a second and three, second and manageable. Keep accumulating first downs that way. Keep moving the football. You don't want to get behind the sticks because then the defense has the advantage. So Bree's going to lead the Saints up here first and 10 at the 33-yard line. The drive starts here with a carry by Ingram. And he'll get this up only to about the 33. Just a yard on the first down carry, so it's second and nine. They'd love to just strike back with a touchdown right here, and if it's a long play, so be it. But the main goal, get a couple of first downs, run some plays, run some clock, allow their defense to get a chance to catch their breath, settle down, and relax a little bit after they just gave up the score. Get ready. Get ready. On second down, Ingram, and he'll get this only up to about the 35. Only a yard on the pickup. And now they've got a third down and eight. Sometimes your philosophies get challenged at times you don't want them to. They did try to stick to the running game on the first two plays. Didn't amount to much. And now facing a third and long at the outset of this drive. Now Breeze on third down. Looking left side and completing it to Thomas. And he'll have it past midfield almost to the 40 before being taken down. And they're able to convert on third with a solid gain of 23. Two minutes remain here in the first half. Back to Century Link Field after this. Yeah. 
A reminder, coming up at halftime, Jonathan Coachman will join us from Orlando with our halftime report, but business to take care of before we get there. A two-minute drill before the coaches' two-minute drill. So from Seahawk territory now, it's first and 10 at the 42-yard line. Throwing now is Breeze. And an alley to run. Eluding the pressure right. He'll get eight on the scramble there. It'll be second and a couple. And that was not a bad scramble there on first down. He didn't force it, nor did he throw it away. He was able to take off, and now he made it a very manageable second and short. Now Breeze throwing on second down. And his throw is incomplete. The veteran Byron Maxwell forcing the incompletion. It's been my observation. There's been a nice variety of play calling defensively. You and I often talk about an offense's ability to keep a defense off balance with what they're doing. I think the converse has been true in this game. Yeah, I think you're right. They seem to have gone off tendency quite a bit. But only the second quarter, a lot of time to change things. The Saints on third down. They've been okay. Two for three thus far. Here it's third and two. Ready. Yellow waiting. Yellow waiting. Bree's going to throw. Losing four yards that time. And now it's fourth down. On fourth down, off goes Drew Brees, and on comes the Saints kicker, Will Lutz, for the field goal attempt. This officially a 55-yard attempt. And this is going to wind up left. Well struck, but it's no good, and this score will stay right where it is. And this is one of the risks you run when you attempt a long field goal. If you miss, the defense takes over the spot of the placement, so now they've got a chance to get one more drive in before halftime. The Seattle offense now set to come back out on the field. Now they'll be looking to duplicate the efforts of drive number one that resulted in seven points in this seven-zip lead. Well, you know how much I enjoy horse racing, right? Looks like they caught a flyer out of the gate, as they would say when you're running the big-time races. It means they get out to a fast start. They're setting the pace, making the other team chase now. Good starting field position for them here as they come up first and 10. Here's Wilson. Now they go screen. It's complete. And he goes out of bounds. It looks like right at the 50. The first down screen pass, good for five. For a second there, I thought that might break big. Screen pass. Looked like it was coming together. Looked like there was an opening. Still. Ended up with a solid game. Second and five after the five-yard completion on first down. From midfield now, here's Wilson. It's caught, lock it. And now before this first down play, we're going to get a timeout here. As the clock will stop with just under 30 seconds to go in the first half. So we're back in the offense getting set following the call of that timeout. Wilson now hitting on 80% of his passes in the early going. 8 of 10. It's first down. Out of the gun, here's Wilson. 
Throws a quick hitter on the slant. That's complete. And now we won't see a play on first down. We're going to get a timeout instead. As the stoppage will come with 23 seconds to go till halftime. So the offensive unit called the T.O. And now we are ready to resume play. yard line and before the second down play we'll get a whistle a signal and a timeout as they stop it with 16 seconds to go in half number one so the offense takes the timeout and they are back out and ready to rock Facing a second and two after that last catch, good for eight yards. Again, Wilson. End zone caught. Touchdown, Seattle. Brandon Marshall as the first half is winding down. And the Seahawks add on to their lead. And that'll give them a two-score lead here, but I'm looking ahead. They just want to hold it for the final moments here of the second quarter. They don't want to give up anything on the other side. No, not at all, because if they don't, it almost had the feel of an imposing their will score. And right now, they want to make sure they keep that and tear it into the second half. Janikowski now for the point after. Janikowski adds the extra point, and that'll make the score 14 to zip. The drive summary that time, five plays. And it all culminates with a Seattle score. to kick is Janikowski. On the return, here's Edmonds. 
And he'll take it up past the 25 to the 26-yard line. Nine seconds to play, likely the final snap of the first half as it's first and ten. We got three, we got three, brother, we got three. They'll run with Ingram here to begin the drive. And he'll be brought down somewhat awkwardly here and a late flag as well. I think this one's going to be a face mask. Personal foul, face mask, defense. So they will accept the penalty and move forward. Automatic first down. So with four seconds to go in the half, here's the field goal unit onto the field. This will approach NFL record territory. It's a 62-yard attempt. And this kick is not going to be close. It's well short, well right to boot. So we come upon halftime with our score 14 to nothing. As we send you cross country to Orlando, Jonathan Coachman is there and has our EA Sports halftime report. Okay, right, Brandon. Thanks very much. And welcome in, everyone, to this slimmed-down version of the EA Sports Halftime Report. This one has certainly been one-sided to this point. It's a two-touchdown difference as the teams have already come back out onto the field for the second half. So let's get you back out as well to Brandon Godden and Charles Davis. All right, Coach, thank you, and we welcome everyone back for quarter number three. The Seahawks with the advantage, and they get the football first as the second half is underway. This will be fielded on the back line of the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. And the Seahawks get ready to trot out on the field. This is sort of what you would call a put-away drive, isn't it? I mean, they score here, especially a touchdown. It's almost out of reach. It certainly feels that way, and I think that they're going to call their plays accordingly because... What you really want to do, even though you know the scoreboard is still up there and the game's going to go on, you think you can take the spirit away from another team, that their drive and will to come back and win can be taken with another score right here. Well, still third quarter, but you just get that feel. Yeah, they're teetering right there on the brink, aren't they? On first and 10, it's Wilson. And he hits on the slant route to Marshall. And up to the 35 before they're able to knock him down. It'll be a gain of 10 to start the drive out, and by a few inches, that'll be a first down. You can see the time and effort and thought that they put into their passing game because it was evident right there. It looks like a simple pitch and catch, but you and I both know that they have planned for this and worked hard to make it happen. Ball up to the 35 now as they come up on first and 10. Here's Penny on the counter. And unable to get downhill there as he'll take this up to about the 37. Tackle there by Alex Anzalone. That didn't appear to be a run blitz. He just darted in once he saw the run develop. That appeared to be a case of see ball, get ball. Now Wilson on second down. He's going to float this one deep right side. That's caught inside the 20. 
It's a big play there for Seattle. And even 50 yards. That's a big time pitch and catch right there. Partner, I remember the days when quarterbacks would try this. They were holding their breath. But nowadays, they're counting on their receiver to be just a little bit better than the defensive back when it's one-on-one -on -one and the ball's in the air like that. So how about this for field position after the big play? Inside the 15 now as they come up on first and 10. Right. Green 80. Green 80. The pitch goes to Penny. Five yards on the carry. Good pickup on first down. Sometimes with the running game, you've just got to stick with it. Look, it's the third quarter, no time to panic. But that also doesn't mean you just do it the same way you've been doing it the entire ball game. Maybe change up some blocking assignments or run a few different plays, but stay with the overall essence of the running game. On second down, Wilson. This will be caught at about the six. And he'll be brought down this time at the five-yard line. That throw good for only a couple. It brings up third down. And, partner, I think that's a great example that not all tight ends are created equal because everything was right. Got the completion, but he's not one of the more dynamic guys in the league. So even though he caught it, couldn't turn it into much more. The Seahawks on third down. A perfect three for three as they look to keep that streak going. This time they face a third and two. To throw is Wilson. And he will score. Touchdown, Seattle. Brandon Marshall, his second touchdown of the night. And the Seahawks find a way to stretch their lead. That drive that really increased their cushion felt very military to me. Very precise. Methodical, that's one of the words you've taught me. And they just got it done. And slowly but surely now, starting to pull away a little bit. Things looking good for them here in the third quarter. Not only pulling away, but you mentioned that slowly but surely. You also drain clock, too, with yep. a drive like that. So you really give yourself an advantage. Janikowski good with the extra point. And that makes the score 21 to zip. A drive that time of six plays. And the Seahawks capping it off with a touchdown. to kick is Janikowski. And here's Lewis. And a good effort on the return there. Gets him across the 30 to the 33-yard line. Now the attention turns to the Saints offense getting ready for their first possession of the second half. They're down in this game. A chance for the offense, though, to put something on the board, get some momentum here at half two. Try and get things kick-started for them. And you know at the half, they discussed how they were going to get that done. This is where scripting comes into play a lot how, of the how time. How many plays do you script coming out of the second most, half? Most of the time in the first half, you're scripting 12 to 16. I think in the second half, you're really scripting more like 8 to 10. Kind of a starter or an opener, whatever they whatever terminology they use. Just something to get you off to a quick start. Now a play fake here on first down. He's going to loft one deep left side here. Into a double team and it's intercepted. Picked off by Byron Maxwell. And a big turnover there as his guys will get the football back. Oh, man, Brandon, not a real good throw that time. He looked like he tried to put a little too much air under this one, and it turned into a floater. And defensively, this is a dream. He could have fair caught that one. That was way too easy. Russell Wilson now gears up to lead the offense again. And do you think he personally is evaluating his game so far? He was pretty good in the first half, been good so far here in the third quarter. He's got to like it, right? Not looking for the dramatics here. Not trying to set the world on fire in terms of stats. 
It's almost like you're driving. Hands at 10 and 2, alert for anything <laughs> out there, watching for trouble on the road, and making sure you get the team home. The bus driver. Let's see if he can drive the bus here again on this drive. They'll run it now out of the gun. And yeah, nothing doing. He's immediately taken down at the line of scrimmage. Demario Davis there on the stop. As usual, the hallmark of a good run defense, linebackers making plays near the line of scrimmage. Absolutely nowhere to run there. Here's Wilson looking to throw on second down. It's caught on the left side by Baldwin. And brought down, but not before they're able to get it up to the 25. 17 yards on the pickup there. The drive will continue. It's a first down. I don't care how many times you tell the story, it never loses its luster for me. Doug Baldwin, undrafted out of Stanford, and plays like a number one receiver should in the NFL. I don't care how you cover him. I don't care that his size isn't great. He's the one that typically comes up with the football. Absolutely. His roots go all the way back to Gulf Breeze, Florida, where he's from right on the water near Pensacola, and then, of course, to Stanford, and boy, he's been good. Wilson throwing over the middle, but it's incomplete. The intended target, Doug Baldwin, and it's second down. Before the game, they were running the route tree about as efficiently and effectively as we could have possibly imagined, but sometimes the passes just go awry. Yeah, let's face it. When you're running the route tree in pregame, you don't have defenders breathing down your neck. You don't have defensive backs making plays on the football. Hard to replicate the intensity of the game in pregame. They'll run it now out of the gun. And this one goes nowhere. Losing yardage back at the 22. It'll be a loss of a full three yards there, and it also brings up third down. So statistically, both of these offenses having a rough time getting a running game going. But boy, what a nice play there defensively. Tackling him behind the line, but you're right. You look at the numbers. Neither side looks on track in the ground game. And the Seahawks on third down. A perfect four for four thus far. This is going to be third and 13. From the gun, it's Wilson. And it's knocked away and incomplete. I remember a coach telling me a long time ago the difference between playing corner and safety in the NFL. Corner is like the Autobahn. Everybody just flying by, and these corners have been really busy in this game, although they got it done on the last play. On the last play, yes, but there have been some good numbers put up against them offensively. Now here's Michael Dixon as he's on to punt for the first time tonight. Here's Ginn. Illegal block in the back. Return team. So this will be accepted as it moves the offense backwards. So Bree's going to lead the Saints up here first and 10 at their own 27. Breeze gives it up to Ingram. And not a whole lot doing there as he'll get it up to about the 28-yard line. Credit him with a one-yard gain there to make it second and nine. They tried a quick hitter inside, but that one was swallowed up because what they're hoping, those big defensive linemen will take the bait and move laterally and open up a crease that they can run through. Didn't happen on that play. Ingram again. They'll only get a couple up to about the 30. That's it, baby. 
That play reminded me a lot of a former teammate of mine. We used to call him the trash man. His ability to sift through traffic and make plays was uncanny. And that's exactly what you want from your Mike linebacker. This offense in desperate need of a conversion as they come up on third down. Ready? We're waiting. From the gun on third down, Breeze. Over the middle, it's Thomas. And he will have a first down as they get him to the ground at the 37. Breeze on the hook up to Thomas for the New Orleans first. Three quarters have come and gone. We'll return with more after this. This is the NFL, and it's on EA Sports. Back now in Seattle, Washington. A lot of happy faces in the crowd at this point as their guys have a big lead here to start quarter number four. Line of scrimmage, the 37 on first and 10. Breeze now on first down. The catch made over the middle by Ginn. And to the 42-yard line here and brought down there. Five yards on the catch there, brings up second down. You got the big lead defensively, willing to give them that underneath stuff, right? And this is why you work on your tackling. Tackle them after the catch, inbounds, keep the clock running. Just go ahead and bleed the game out that way. Second and five after the five-yard completion on first down. Working from the gun, it's Breeze. His throw incomplete. Another wayward pass. You know, things started out poorly in this game, and to be frank, they just really haven't gotten much better. And all that does is embolden the secondary. They feel good about what's going on, and they just play better and better. The Saints on third down. They've converted three out of five thus far. This will be hey, third and five. Hey, now, Breeze again. That's complete to Meredith. And he's got the first down yardage before being taken down at midfield. It goes as a gain of eight and it moves the chains. One of the selling points at the end route is it gives the quarterback a really nice sight line to his receiver and almost on a direct shot, able to throw the ball into the middle of the field and have a great chance of success as they did on that play. Breeze now. Five straight completions here in this second half. First and ten. Ready. Yellow lady. From midfield, here's Breeze. And he'll go down inside the 45 before going out of bounds. A gain of six there on first. People worry about throwing the out route because often it can get jumped and that can turn into an either an incompletion or an interception. But not on that one. Everything came together and he catches it and goes over the sideline. Six go. yards was the pickup on the last completion, so here's second and four. Again, it's Breeze. Over the middle and it's incomplete. He was trying to get it to his running back, Alvin Kamara. And it's third and four. And not to get too overcritical there, because he knows what he's doing, but his shoulders looked a little off kilter there when he threw that. I don't think you're being overly critical there. You're just analyzing it, and he gets those shoulders right. That pass will go from incomplete to complete. This offense has converted two third downs on this drive already. This is third and four. Again, they'll throw with Breeze. Out of the backfield, that's complete to Kamara. And he will have a first down here at about the 40. And five yards on the play there as the drive will continue. And we see another pitch and catch there to the running back. This position just continues to evolve. They become just as critical to the passing attack as a lot of receivers' tight ends because their ability to make people miss in the open field can really generate big plays for an offense. Throwing on first down is Breeze. And his throw is going to be incomplete. Brandon Coleman was the intended target. And that'll bring up second down. Let's face it, you can run the route tree 
as many times as you want, get in sync, practice it, do all those things. But once you get to game speed, it doesn't always time up quite that well. That one goes incomplete. So second down and 10. Once again, they'll go from the 40. Back to the air on second down. It's Breeze. And incomplete there. A nice hit. Jars the ball free and brings up third down. We have not seen a whole lot of wide open receivers. Everything seemingly has been contested. And that's another nice job there to force an incompletion. They've been very cohesive, knowing each other's moves all game long, and they've been on the spot just about every time. And they've held them in check on the scoreboard. Now Breeze on third down. And he locates Josh Hill, complete. And he's going to get this one down to the edge of the red zone. A good pick up there of 20 yards. Nice game there, partner, but you and I both know that won't do anything for the final score. They're not going to win this one. Right now, they're playing for pride and fantasy points. <laughs> and just to erase that goose egg, nobody wants to be shut out. Finally, a first red zone opportunity for these guys. First and 10 right at the 20. Into the red zone, it's Breeze. Throwing over the middle, and it's incomplete. He was trying to get it that time to Ted Ginn, and that'll bring up second down. He started out having some troubles back in the first half connecting with his receivers. Really hasn't gotten a whole lot better. Yeah, he's at less than 50%, and you and I both know that just won't do. So I would think about spreading things out, putting it on the receivers, make them win those one-on-one -on -one battles on the perimeter and find their way open. Now flags will come in, and I think this is against the Saints up front. All start offense. So that'll back him up five. So after the penalty, heading in the wrong direction, second and 15. Breeze to throw again. Incomplete. Ben Watson was the intended target, and that'll make it third down. I'm not even sure I know who this guy is out there playing right now. This is very unlike him, one of the most accurate guys in the league, totally off his game right now. I don't know. I was going to ask you what you pin it on, but defensively, they've been pretty solid. Well, sometimes, you know, those defenders, they get into the receivers pretty well, and if they chip away at their timing, it's going to affect what you're doing throwing the ball as well. On third and long, it's Breeze. And he can't come up with a pick. Nearly his second of the game. Instead, fourth down. My man's getting a little loose with the football there, right? Interception before, almost had one here. He's got to start taking better care of it. Yeah, it really should have been back-to-back -back drives with interceptions. He's lucky there. They're already slim hopes are going to ride on this one. They'll go on fourth down. Now flags will come in. And I think this is against the Saints up front. False start. Offense. And that'll set them back five. A critical one here if they're going to have any shot at this thing. So they'll go for it on fourth down. Now Breeze, got to have this one. And they will not be able to hook up there. It's incomplete. Boy, it looked like he had it and dropped it. And the Seahawks are going to take over the football. Well, that's another mistake there on the drop pass on fourth. And We've seen them do things like this all game. It's not hard to figure out why they're down by that deficit. They haven't made plays that are going to 
keep them in the game or win the game all game long. That's another example right there. It all boils down at the end of it to execution. Either you make the play or you don't. And out now come the Seahawks. Been a very strong performance for them, really on both sides of the football. The turnover on downs, the most recent example, and now, obviously, they're in a great spot here. Yeah, if you're over on the bench right now, you're shaking hands with your teammate, you're hugging him, give him a little dap. Been a big, big performance for them. Now you just don't get careless, take care of the ball on the way out. Wilson and the Seahawks take over now, first and 10, right at the 30. After the penalty, it's Penny. And tough going there as he'll only get it up to about the 31. Just a yard on the pickup there, and it'll bring up a second and nine. And when do they start thinking about burning these timeouts? They've got all three still defensively. To me, you have to start right now. Here's the time, and that means you've got to stop them on defense, not give up the yardage. Use your timeouts in order to get the ball back and try and score yourself. But now is the time to start using those timeouts. And keep in mind, it'll also stop the clock at the two-minute warning. And he'll get this up only to about the 33. Just a couple on the pickup there, and now it's third down. Bottom line, they want to keep this clock rolling, so they'll take that one right there. They just want to keep falling forward, and they want to put the onus on the big fellas up front in order to bring this one home. The Seahawks on third down. They've been near perfect, four for five to this point. This is third and seven. Time for a break. This one, all over but the shouting. We'll finish it after this. So it's Seahawk football as we march toward a conclusion. And let's see what they've come up with offensively after having time to talk it over. The Seahawks on third down. They've been near perfect. Four for five to this point. This is third and seven. Wilson. It's caught right side, Dixon. And he'll get it up near the 35, right at the 34 here. Good defense holds him to only a yard, and it'll be fourth down. Whether you're playing West Coast offense or not, one of the maxims of the West Coast offense is you're either throwing a touchdown or a check down. In other words, look for the big shot, but be smart. And I think they did exactly that on that play. They didn't get the first down, but they're taking care of the ball well. Yeah, and being rightly cautious with that lead here in the second half. Now here's Michael Dixon. Always a good sign when your first punt comes in the fourth quarter. And that'll hit in the end zone. Much too much leg there. That'll be a touchback. Out onto the field comes New Orleans. They're down big here late. I don't know, You just one last drive here for Pride? Some people like to do that. I remember playing for a guy once we were down huge, and someone said, Coach, what do you want to call? He just waved a hand like, who cares? Let's <laughs> get out of here and do something <laughs> some other time. But some teams like to do something at the end to feel a little bit better yeah. as, they continue to, as they continue to move forward. Yeah, probably just want to put this one behind them. On first and 10, here's Breeze. That's out to Hill, right side complete. And past the 40 before he's out of bounds. A good pick up there, a 22. Clock management, definitely critical here if they want to get back in this game. Absolutely agreed. They have to up the tempo in this case, down a couple of scores. Want to make sure they have a chance to win this ball game. One play has him up past the 40 already, and another first and 10. Ready. Ready. Breeze now on first down. Drops this off to Kamara out of the backfield. And he showcases the spin, a pretty good game before he's taken down. Personal foul, face mask, defense. 
So they'll take the yardage and tack on 15 more for the face on mask. The first down. Talk about a play that absolutely costs you in the end. Just trying to do your job, right? Trying to get him on the ground. Next thing you know, they'll march off another 15 against your squad. Now it's first and ten. A big mistake, especially when you factor in the personal foul yardage. On first down, Breeze. And a sideline pass that's caught by Thomas. And he is out of bounds inside the 30. A gain of six there on first. Timing is everything, and they work on this cut all the time. They work on all the timing patterns, and this time it paid off for them. Worked him to the center of the field, cut it to the outside, ball's delivered, gets both feet down for the completion. Six yards was the pickup on the last completion, so here's second and four. Hey, 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 we got three, we got three. Ready, you waiting? Three From the gun, it's Breeze. Under pressure, and down he goes. They sack him back at the 36. Frank Clark in there to drop him, and it'll be a loss of about eight. Shotgun now for Breeze. Now Breeze wants the football, and the Seahawks have recovered. Okay, this isn't one where you want to take the game tape and hold it up as an example, do you? I mean, you talk about frustrating all the way through. And that last error, I think that crystallizes it, doesn't it? Absolutely. That's been representative of their entire game still being shut out. The Seahawks offense now, they get ready to head back onto the field. They have the dream scenario you hope for coming into the game. Just one kneel here, and this game should be over. And it's always the final play of preparation each week. The practicing of the kneel down formation, the victory formation. We've got a game in hand, and that's all they're going to want to do now. They'll put someone back deep just in case something goes haywire. But all in all, take the snap, kneel down, and, and shake hands. <laughs> yes, get out of there. Good starting field position here for the Seahawks as they come up first and 10. Oh, Wilson going to throw. And the tight end, Dixon, left side. And another mistake here defensively as a flag is down on the tackle. And that's going to tack on 15 Push more. Foul. Face mask. Defense. They're down here in the fourth, and that personal foul penalty is not going to help. No, in these types of situations, players will tell you that's extra intensity. From where we sit, it's actually frustration. Not a good play. Now it's first and ten. A big mistake, especially when you factor in the personal foul yardage. This is Carson. And he's going to lose yards. They take him down at the 26. That's going to go as a loss of a yard, and it'll be second down. Came out in a power set, but that only served to put more men in the box. And guess what? If you're going to do that... You've got to win up front, right? Your offensive guys have got to beat the defenders. They lost all leverage on that play. A loss of a yard there to start out. That leads to a second and 11. The storyline of this one, Charles, no doubt, the number zero. Zilch, nada. A shutout so hard to do in the NFL. It really is. And what an accomplishment because you feel that not just on the defensive side, but as a full team. There's a lot of pride that goes into shutting out an opponent. And how about that zero on the scoreboard for them going along with those zeros in the time column, too?
So that's a wrap for Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gunn. And this has been a presentation of the NFL on EA Sports. For more, check us out at easports.com. It's a win for the Seahawks here as we say so long from Seattle.